Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about how to maximize your Halloween trick-or-treating candy yield. So we're going to get a little physicky, a little mathy. And uh, first things first, focus on average distance between doors. Now you might look at this neighborhood behind me and think, this is a great place. Look how many houses. It's You could spend the whole night trick-or-treating here and not run out. Well, if you look closely, the distance between each door is at least 20 feet, which is, you know, 10, 15 meters. And so you're going to be eating up a lot of time just walking back and forth um, between the houses. That's going to cost a lot of energy, uh, tire you out, and most of that time won't be uh, getting candy. However, when you factor in the dependency on the average income per household in each neighborhood, that can play a factor too. Maybe there's more distance between these houses, but also the average house tends to be richer and give more candy. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated because, you know, um, you know, sometimes the higher income houses aren't always the ones who will give more candy. So then you have to factor in more qualitative factors like such as, uh, I would say reputation of the neighborhood. So certain neighborhoods just by word of mouth, maybe or maybe not, uh, tend to deliver more large candy bars. Maybe your friends, your family have heard of that. Maybe not. For me, Halloween isn't really that big. And so no one's really talking about like which neighborhood is best, which neighborhood is worse. So there is some trial and error, you know. So sometimes if your parents are willing, you can, you know, figure out which house is, which neighborhood is best and go from there. So in terms of, uh, you know, distance between houses, there are some neighborhoods which are really just apartment duplexes or apartments that are right next to each other. So you're not even walking more than a couple feet per house that yield maximization will be infinitely greater. You can hit up 10 houses in the time it'll take you to hit up two or three here. And even if the average income or the average candy yield per house is much higher here, the fact that you're hitting up two or three or four times as many houses in the same amount of time means more candy in a nutshell. Finally, you have to factor in types of candy you like, which brands do you like, which areas tend to give out certain types of candy. And th this is where historical uh, reference really helps you out. Some people just leave candy outside of their house, which can also play a factor since candy outside of the house means that you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, ringing the doorbell and waiting, which will c cost more time. Plus, you know, you get to sense what type of candy you g they get and grab as much as you want to a reasonable extent. Uh, so let's say you like uh, Kit Kats, but you hate Snickers. Uh, there's gonna be certain houses that you know give out Kit Kats. Or you, what's more memorable are houses that usually give out the king size, whereas the others don't. They just love doing that for kids. And uh, it usually takes a few years of history to build that up, but you want to start with those houses. Get, go there first rather than towards the end of the night because then you get too tired. Sometimes certain houses will close up early, earlier than you expect. So by the time you get there, they're all done. Some of them have gone to sleep. Some of them are like, you're still trick-or-treating? So there it is, uh, the trick-or-treating maximization yield formula. Start with distance between doors factor in the average yield per house generally speaking you know that may be the same but it may differ depending on the neighborhood and then you want to move into qualitative factors that depend on history word of mouth reputation there may be certain regions pockets of a neighborhood that yield more than other and then of course you know which types of candy which quantities do you prefer if it's Kit Kats if it's Snickers you know some areas tend to do different things some just there's one house that gave away uh, apple cider instead of uh, candy or toothbrushes well 
keep that in mind as well. And of course, I'm sure there's other tricks that I forgot to mention, such as um, what if you have groups of people? If you go with a group, there's pros and cons to that. It's probably gonna slow you down because the group moves more slowly between houses. However, with a group, um, it's more organized, it's more coordinated, it's safer, and uh, you get the added benefit of, you know, them doing most of the work. They'll guide you, they'll ring the doorbell, you open it, and then everyone grabs at the candy at once, which potentially means that you could grab a little bit more without them noticing. Good luck and see you later.